cliffcentral.com. This is the Third Draft Podcast, the show where we interview all your favorite, coolest, funniest, awkward, and out of this world online sensations. I'm Cynthia. And I'm Mash. And together we bring you fresh interviews every week on cliffcentral.com where we talk to some of your favorite content creators about the business of content creation, how they come up with the content, and of course... The bag? How much money they're making, honey. Oh, yes. So catch fresh episodes every Wednesday on cliffcentral.com. On YouTube. And on podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever, or wherever you, you get, get your, your podcasts. podcasts. Don't worry, my phone my phone is on silent when he's Mash is behaving today. He didn't shade no one. I know. Yet. No. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Even yours is like <laughs> Hello, is it you I'm looking for? What to do, what's up? I'm Simphia Zamagilo Mteta And as usual, I'm not alone I have my partner in crime The one and only, oh, Mesh Hello, how are you feeling, Simphia? I am awesome I feel like I say that in every podcast But um, trust and believe, that's just me all day, every day <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that And another thing that's awesome Is our guest on today's episode Yeah, homegirl is mm-hmm. already drinking Up in here She already took the cup and was like Let me sup on it you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us who is our guest this week? Ooh, where do I even start? Our guest today is an absolute superstar hey. She is a digital marketing s- specialist she is a YouTuber, a wife, a mom, and a boss babe. <laughs> what with, does she not do? <laughs> what does she not do? With over 7 million total views on her YouTube channel. Y'alls, welcome to the show. <laughs> what an introduction. Thank you so much for having me. It's well, only fitting. It's only fitting. Come on now. Thank you. Did I, we lie? Well, I didn't know we hit 7 million already. Really? Thanks. Yeah. No, that's I what didn't. happens when you're having fun. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't always check and that's a good thing. Because when that I started, is. I was always checking. Mm. Oh, wow. No, that's a good thing. But how are you? I am very well. Uh, spiced up, actually. Thank you very much for the drink. Yes. It's a pleasure. I, I feel like giving you a lecture, but it's fine because mm. you're so awesome. <laughs> you drank it before time. <laughs> and we're going to get straight into that yes. drink. So we have a section here on the Draft Podcast where we pair drinks with our guests. Mm. So it's a drink that we think best represents you and describes you. Ooh. And we're going to give you a You've moment. Because so mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to guess what the drink is. Mm-hmm. I don't, so since you kind of know, you must just tell us why you think uh, we chose this particular drink. I actually don't know what the drink is. Oh, okay, so, cool. okay, so you have to do the guess and the... Mm. Okay, so on cue, I'm on yeah, cue. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. you can even sip it again. The, yeah. the thing is, I don't drink. I didn't announce that, so that's why it's very spicy. I might be a different person <laughs> when I leave here. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, I can guess because yes, of the color. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Bernini okay. or brutal fruit. Is that your final answer? Let's lock it in. Those are strong for me. So if it's not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you think if if it was why do you mm. think we chose that for you because i am sweet and spicy mm-hmm. and they both speak to sexy and smart all the s's yes yes That's i love right that yes. I, lo- I love that <laughs> Mesh, All the is, S's. What's and that is correct. Okay. You are sweet, you are spicy, oh. you bring the sexiness, and above all, you keep it classy oh, always. Thank you and so much. And when picking a drink for you, we're like born a lowest alcohol percentage. Yes. Because we do know that you're not really much of a drinker. Yes. So oh, like wow. lowest alcohol percentage, yes. but still tasty mm. and still sexy and sassy. Yes. And this is how we picked um brutal fruit yes. and it's a spritzer. It's oh, an apple wow. and berry spritzer. Oh, wow. I, so. was, I was there. I was, I was <laughs> yes. there by those. You okay. were there in the Zoom. Mm. Went, you know yourself. <laughs> yeah, the problem is who I'll be when I leave here. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, we do not um, take any um, responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like, you know, it's not our fault. 
<laughs> At least I have a driver. It's all good. Perfect. So she you can drink prepared. even more. <laughs> she came prepared. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to get right into the nitty gritty. And mm-hmm. first of all, we want to get to know all about you. Um, we see y'alls on social media. We see y'alls on YouTube. But we want to get to know who's y'alls when the cameras aren't rolling mm. and where exactly y'alls come fr- comes from. And mm. we're going to start right at the beginning. Your family, where did you grow up? Yeah, okay. So I was actually born in White River, Pumalanga. Oh, I was going to say, where's that? Wow. Okay, so that's usually the, re- the reaction that I'm used to. Um, when I moved, I eventually moved to Cape Town and it was like, Mapumalanga, where is that? So this is standard. Mm-hmm. I grew up in White River for about 12 years, born and bred. I still say I'm born and bred. And then my mom left my dad, very uncomfortable, unhealthy mm. relationship. She packed a bag one day. He had no idea. Last day of school in December, he dropped us at Wimpy. This is basically my childhood in a nutshell. <laughs> and we never came home. And she basically said, even if we sleep under a pipe, as long as my kids are safe. So that's when we moved to Cape Town. I think most of who yours was sort of made was in Cape Town. I always say, I think Cape Town definitely took more out of me. It it took myself out because the small town girl in me was shyer, quieter, Mm -hmm. but she knew there was definitely more. So that's, Mm. yeah, that's the the, the concluded or shortened version of it. Mm. But yeah, growing up, I was more of a daddy's girl actually. And I didn't have any idea of what was happening between my mom and my dad until the day I broke up with a friend. I came home in September and my mom, I basically said, my, my, my friend broke up with me today. And she said, well, mom is breaking up with dad, but dad doesn't know about it yet. Ooh. And in three months time, we're going to go. You'll see your clothes sort of going missing and disappearing. It's just me preparing the way. And that's that's basically... I think that raised me in like three months. I just knew, Guti, okay, girl, you gotta grow be a up. Change. Yes, I'm a firstborn of three, so it was also fitting that she told me. You know how the firstborns are told about everything first, and then yeah. <laughs> my brother yeah. and my sister are just like, "Well, how do we get here?" And I'm like, "Oh, don't worry, we'll catch up." Was one pambi. <laughs> yeah, so that was basically my my childhood, my early childhood, I'd say. And then Cape Town, last year of primary school, Mitchell's Plain. So that's where I sort of, you know, learned my accent. And um, I changed the yeah. It was fun for Malanga. It brought savor Afrikaans. Yeah, that's all I could say, girl. But I do change, you know. That's why I change as well. I can oh, cap South Afrikaans prat. So yeah, what what's okay? I can yeah, ons can also change. So it depends. Yeah, I forget me what to say. That's good enough. And then yeah, high school and varsity was Cape Town as well. And at the age of twenty four. I moved to Johannesburg. But what yeah. was that then? Because you're in Cape Town. And you know, a lot of people mm. that stay in Cape Town love Cape Town. But what got you to take that leap to come to Jopak? My perspective or my mom's? Mine is Korea. Okay. okay. She, my husband, <clears throat> who who we were dating at the time and he moved to Johannesburg a few years before me. So she might have a different perspective of okay. why I moved. Okay. But for me, after varsity, I studied finance and investment and I really wanted to give my mom the best in a sense. You know, I knew how many sacrifices she made to get yes. us where we were as children. So as soon as I got my first job, I bought her the house that she lives in today. Ooh, I and I, I sort of felt like, okay, well, when's my time? When is y'all's going to grow up? And do the things she wanted I've done what my mom wanted me to do In a sense of career and focus And I sowed back <laughs> into the soil In which you know all the seeds that made me were mm. sown And after that I decided Let me spread my wings And actually pursue my media dreams And where else to do that but Joburg But mm. then a month into moving here So I moved from NetBank uh, Property Finance I was headhunted And uh, I found myself in corporate again In Joburg Oh, so yeah, that was a double whammy. Money, I, I it was money or media. Okay, you know, while and I was you were doing, just like, you know what, yeah. money, money for now, and that's where my YouTube career sort of began because I still is this when whoa? Because I, I know you <laughs> back in the day yeah. with the hat, hey. oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, and it wasn't necessarily your YouTube channel; it was another brand. Oh, I forgot, but all I, things I, here. There we go, mm. and that's kind of when I first got to. 
know and see you and then and then a YouTube channel came along. Yes. Well, the YouTube channel was there, but it was oh. really small. I had okay. under a thousand or maybe even under 750 followers at the time. Didn't have much of an Instagram presence as well, but mm-hmm. I needed to channel my energy while I was in corporate because I've always had that itch of like get in front of people and I feel in my element when I do speak. So getting headhunted is one thing. The money's good, but the little y'all still wants to speak. Little y'all's is like, if I'm not going to get into media, let me create my own little platform. Mm. So I, and, and part of the first videos that I actually posted was getting in front of, getting into the front seat of your life and driving it towards your purpose. So while I was in corporate on Saturdays, I'd actually just pick up the camera mm-hmm. and film. And then in June that year, so I moved in 2016, March, I got serious with the channel. June, I cut my hair and the first video that blew up was just that. Got into this Was game. it a, a Britney moment when you cut your hair? Just clarity? No. Oh, just it the was, No, it wasn't that deep, you okay, know. I'd, no, the truth is I grew my relaxed hair down my back and I was like, if I can do that, what about my natural hair? You know, how mm. far can I take this? And I'd never seen my roots besides, you know, when you, mm. your hair is gross and you need to relax. So I decided, let me just cut it while I'm here. And that happened to be at the right time in South Africa when natural hair was blowing up. So yes. I literally said, went to this camp, bought a pair of scissors and cut my hair. And all these brands just flocked and Unilever ran into my channel in that way and at the time I was just taking people on a journey of this natural hair thing and I didn't actually know at the time that I'd get paid so soon doing it Mm. yeah all right. Wow. You know, so you're living up to that uh, statement that they say when a lady cuts her hair, she's about to change her life. Yeah, no. Absolutely. Okay, I love that. You mentioned Unilever. So that was the first ever brand you worked with after getting into YouTube. Yes, it was technically the first one that paid me. Um, I went to a beauty expo after cutting my hair and I thought I was this big YouTuber with like 30, you're 40, in the views. <laughs> 40 views. No, literally. I, I really am my own hype person. If you can touch 40 mm. people to, to actually watch your video, you're doing something right. Yeah. So I went to this beauty expo and L'Oreal was there. Mm-hmm. And I said to them, I'm a YouTuber without saying my numbers. Mm-hmm. Here's a little piece of paper. Here's my email and my channel. And they happened to be hosting uh, an event for Dark and Lovely. You leave it owns mm-hmm. Dark. I mean, L'Oreal owns Dark and Lovely. Yeah. And I was invited. So then I thought, oh, wow, I this could it. be. It didn't even pay me. You know, I did a review for them. But that would be the first brand I say I worked with because mm-hmm. they actually invited me to an event without the following, without the sensation. You know, and at the time, I don't think anyone else was willing to even call me a YouTuber, but I was, and the brand believed me. So that's mm. why I always say I think they they would be the first brand I'd say I worked with, but paid. I got the long term contract from Unilever. Mm. Beautiful. That's a nice story. Thank mm. you. Like especially when you talk about the forty views, because I think a lot of content creators can relate. Can relate, especially when they start off, because sometimes they don't even get forty; they get three. Mm, mm. And then they're just like, well, I'm going to stop and I'm not going to do this because good, tough, good, tricky. I mean, even getting three people to watch is something. It's something, you know. If it's not you, you know, for me, the first three views is me. Actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, um, you, you have to be, be very sure careful. To, you have to be, you watch it to be like, okay, it's posted, it's out live, and then like an hour, you're like, ah, oh, let me watch it again, and then you watch it on another device, thinking, you know, maybe I can change the Literally. algorithm mm-hmm. to yes. think that yes. people are watching. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, we also know those tricks. Yeah, ish, guys, I'm exposing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, um, when you first got into YouTube, Nam, mm. what equipment were you using? Was it just a cell phone? Did you buy a camera? No, this girl was working at the bank. She was making money, you know. Ooh. So so you got the cam. The, what, um, the yeah, my first bonus uh, in Cape Town. I literally, I think I even walked to Orms in Cape Town um, to go buy my first camera with my bonus. I was so happy. Also, mm-hmm. I, it was the one unselfish thing that I wanted to do for myself because that's the first one again. I'd always just been a giver, and it's not a mm. bad thing. Well, I say it. As if it's a bad thing But it always felt like If it's not Like my first fruits The first pay Give it to mom You know um, The first house they Give it to mom Or your sisters Or how's your brother Going to get to school And with that bonus I was like Nah This is going to me <laughs> Let me yes. buy this camera what was And the camera? I think it was the 600D The Canon 600D Entry level 
Every, yeah. every um, content creator they Start say so yeah 600 to 700d yeah, so heavy ones yeah like, you can't vlog with that but i did yeah <laughs> I, I have it girl i i know i still have it very much it, it, it's it's i wouldn't say bulky but um it is no it's, it's bulky, bulky. Okay. Yeah, but it, it really it gets the, the job done it does um, even if you can't see yourself so some videos i was very blurry uh because i can't see what's happening and i didn't have my boyfriend who's my husband now you know behind the camera at times i was too shy and and you thinking i'm still so small like this dream is still a little bit of a big dream to me but to my family and my closest people they don't really know what i'm doing they don't really they don't understand what i'm doing so for now i'm just gonna make it work you mm. know wow and then you also mentioned your your husband <laughs> <laughs> my minister um I know that you actually share a bit about him on social media as well. Mm. You share um, pictures of you guys together. And I think there is a vlog or two of you guys together as well. Can I tell you, she dropped a TikTok. I am shut in. Good guys. Good There we go. And people are just like, what are you talking about, girl? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you got a bit of a... I had that one person who's like, yeah... You know, a, a, is it called a Debbie Damper? Yeah. Debbie Downer. Debbie, Debbie Downer. Downer. Yeah, yeah, she shut it down for me. Negative Nancy. Oh, she was really oh, she's like, oh, please don't say mm. marriage is nice. I say my marriage. I was like, oh, girl. Speak you for yourself. Mm. Speak for yourself. And plus, this is my platform. You ain't telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah, what he but uh, uh. well, Why are people trying to They're projecting mm, their own Projecting and Headaches mm. You know um, Guys Just saying uh, Humanat in mm. marriage We don't know marriage about is nice. But humanat in marriage <laughs> <laughs> No it is It is It's a beautiful stage It's not a booth You know so, <laughs> I love that I love that <laughs> And <laughs> So I wanted to find out Um Making the decision to actually share your relationship and share um, some some details about your relationship as well on social media on YouTube mm. um, is this, was it a discussion with your partner or what, did it just come naturally? You're just like you know what we've been at it. Let's just pa 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 picture picture video video. Once the cows were on the other side, yeah. I knew because yeah now there's no going back now. <laughs> you, I ain't giving those cows back, you know. <laughs> And that's when I shared him. So mm. I think one of our first videos was how he proposed mm. or meet yes. my husband. Yeah. I don't think there was ever like a boyfriend tag. I mean, I knew I was going to marry the guy, but you can never be sure mm. in this life, you know, until your family knows him, until there's a ring on my finger mm. and the cows are there. I needed to, to just make sure. And that's when I was confident wow. and he's shy, but I definitely asked for his permission. Yes. Um, and then after we got married, it was set. It was part of his vows. He said, I will support you. On your YouTube journey oh. I was like Oh locked in bro oh. So even on days Where he doesn't want to I'm like But you said I didn't say it You did you, and you Before God and the people I got a lot of witnesses <laughs> I got a lot of You can't go back on that <laughs> So yeah Once he Once we were married Oh no It was set I was just like Baby we're filming I'm preparing you Seven days in advance mm, I know. love that <laughs> And have you guys Have you have you guys ever Um Discussed or considered having a joint YouTube, a joint <laughs> content. Mm, no. Because two what episodes up? ago, um, we actually also interviewed a, 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 a YouTube couple. Ooh. They have an Instagram page Ooh. together. They have a Mzandile and Scissor. Oh, I love them so much. I love them so much. Yes. They're so cute. Like, yeah, I was yeah. just like, oh, you can't stop it. So, <laughs> no, we wouldn't. Okay. My husband's very shy. Oh, so, okay. if you've seen oh. him, even with the speaking, he's gotten used to the camera now. And it's only because he really supports me and loves what I do and sees, you know, the value in my channel. But in reality, he, like, once the camera is off, he's just like, okay, cool. Can I take the shirt off now? I'm getting hot, you know? And that's how you know, because he, he's really doing it for me, honestly. Mm. And that's not his zone. Whereas Mzwa and, and Caesar are both passionate about YouTube. And I really think there's something special when, the passion and the interest is really genuinely there. Not mm. that my husband is not being genuine, but I also know when he is being his fully like genuine self and I want to see him happy. I never want to also force him to film because once you start a channel, you're committing, you know, yes. I would not want him to commit to a channel. He's committed to supporting me. So support me, but <laughs> <laughs> let me not force a channel down your throat. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I, I love that. So you started off with like hair. Nah. And now we're seeing Uhabi 
And now we're seeing a bit of vlogs and you're doing like a variety of content, mm. you know. Was that an easy transition for you? Absolutely. So again, back to that very first video when I was still in Cape Town, talking about getting into the front seat of your life and driving it towards your purpose. That's always been my thing. I used to be so frustrated. I think it was my varsity times when I tried to look for a role model. Remember there was a time in school where you had to write who your role model is. Mm. And I struggled to find a role model who I can actually pinpoint parts of their lives I knew about. Not everything, but their journey. How did mm. you get there? Mm -hmm. So I found that we always know about people's destinations, but we never really know the pit stops, the speed bumps, yes. the triumphs, the trials. So I took it upon myself to really share that part of my life when I want to and feel ready to. And that, that became easy. So again, the natural hedge. Journey. I always also said if I relax my hair That's my choice I'll take you on that journey as well So mm. my channel has always been about the journey Far more than far beyond the hair The makeup, anything else It's really about understanding the fact that We are not mono in mm. our making yes. You know there's so much to us And the journey is so much more important Because that's where the lessons are learned So that's really anytime I share That's my filter Mm. I always go back What is What value is there in here And that's why I could also charge Brands like Unilever The amounts that I did Because of the value Anytime I put up a video Even if it's about hair Has anyone learned anything here? Are they just watching me Doing my hair? Like What can I draw from this? You mm. know So there's always that I always actually researched My hair videos And nobody mm. knows this But I always spend time Because I was like If I'm going to spit some facts Let it be real Let it be true And it could be true for me At that time I might change my mind But it's always about that journey and making sure that someone can leave and, and be impacted in one small way or one massive way. Mm. Well, I love that. It brings me to my next question. You talking about your journey. You had left YouTube. <laughs> when? Mm. Three, month, three months ago from the date of you? this recording. You? Who did Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why we invited you. Let's this put the yeah. vlog camera on again. I believe it was on the 4th of August, 2022. Hey. OMG. <laughs> you had left YouTube. Mm. So I say, Yo. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, we see another video. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> mm. I would like to know, um, and you shared online, you know, uh, the reason why you, you leaving and you also did a video of why you came back. But I want to get the story of like, how was that conversation, um, with yourself when you realized, yeah, I think I might want to, I think we should call it a break, you know, mm. that you wanted to take an indefinite break and then you realize, mm, no, I think I actually want to come. How was that conversation? So the initial one, I was struggling. And my brand is very authentic to who I am. It's very closely. That's why I always go back to that story. Getting into that, that front seat. There mm. is no y'alls without y'alls. Mm. There's y'alls, the persona, but I'm not that girl, you know. And there's a time on the internet where you blow up so much that people put you in a box. And I remember the day I quit my first job in the bank and then I moved to Joburg and then I quit the corporate job. It always go, goes back to, well, who is y'alls? Where is y'alls in all this? Like, it's pity pity. Mm. You know, I am not y'alls who just does hair. And I found myself in a space where I was so defined and restricted at the same time. And I needed to break free from that cage. So at the time in reality, when I went back to my grand, I just wanted to be a grandchild who's not judged. And the day I filmed that video, I was in a house and I was like, I just want to be a granddaughter right now. That's yeah. the safest place I feel. I didn't want to be a mom. So I left Fez at home. I didn't want to be a wife. So I left my husband at home. And that is me being true to who I am. Mm. And in that moment, I knew that I needed to let go of who the internet defined y'all as. Okay. The best way to do that is to be honest with both me. And my audience, once again, that journey, mm. this is where we are right now. We are closing a chapter and we're closing it shut. We're not going to open that door. In fact, I've considered deleting previous videos, but they still make me money. So I can't do that. <laughs> That's the filter there. I'm like, we 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 we're still making money on those videos. We're not deleting those. But that chapter had to be closed because the woman I was before I stepped into my grandmother's house was ready to say goodbye to everything. Okay. I was ready to, to leave every single thing, including my life. But the y'alls I know is a positive sister 
who fills and her cup is empty. So I needed to let go of that. So that's that's really why I, I ended the channel. And I'm glad I did because that video was authentic to me today mm. and it was then. Okay. And a month later, I picked up the camera and I felt filled again. I felt fulfilled again. And I found her because she was gone. She was so, she was in such a deep place. Mm. My grand cried. My grand uh, refilled and refueled me again, you know, and I'm getting emotional. But um, that's how close I am to my, my channel and to who I am. And that's how close my brand is to me. Mm. And I needed to do that. And I'm so glad that I did. So when I did actually say I'm ready to, you know, start again, it was obviously made with a lot of questions. Like, whoa, 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 call me. Was that, what are you doing? No. This is too sensationalized. In August, you released a video. In October, you want to come back? That makes no sense. Again, my journey is so different to everyone else's. And I respect that. Mm. And self-respect is very important, but so is self-awareness. Mm. So what am I doing with the self-development that I've gained within these two months? Without self-awareness mm. And it brought me to a place where I was like Okay, y'all Outside of what your audience wants Outside of what people think of you What do you want? Mm. Why have you built this platform? If there were no views What would you still be doing today? And I did just that I picked up the camera I vlogged uh, the, the, Those videos are not Some videos are not on there yet <laughs> You know But I really did that Because it made me feel so good You know that thing about knowing your why? Mm. Without the noise, without the distraction, without the social media I feel so good when I pick up the camera And that's why I came back, you know I called up someone who's a producer and I said, let's produce a show Yours has always wanted to produce a show That's what yours wants <laughs> Yours gets what she wants Because again, that, that front seat, where am I going? Mm. So, and I said, <laughs> I'll face whatever comes Whatever the internet brings People might judge me, people might might swear, people might be angry because they're emotionally mm. invested in this channel. But what does y'all need right now? So that's that's why I came back. And I came back at a time where it's kind of full circle because Daily Dose of y'all a few years ago uh, started because of that. I always go back and forth into this cage where I'm like, I don't like what I'm doing because now I'm defined by other people. I'm doing things because of other people. Authenticity speaks to who you truly are. So in November, once again, two years later, I come back and I'm like... I want to do a series. I want to be back and I want to do it for me. Mm. And then the series that you did is called Between Takes? Absolutely, because real life happens between takes. Oh, I love that. Ooh. Absolutely love it. And it's premiering right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you saw that? You got the notification? <laughs> I'm watching it right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so but, we have a producer question mm -hmm. um, based off like you leaving YouTube, right? During that time, did you watch any YouTube? Um, when you decided to take that break Or were you completely off social media I watched YouTube I watched people who were going through life as normal So I watched vlogs I watched South African YouTubers I also watched motivational content Because that's me Once again, like I, I'm somebody who's always pouring out in a sense mm. And I needed that at the time I needed something to fill my cup And then I also am a social media specialist So there's a part of me that's like Oh, what's happening now? What's trending now on, on YouTube? YouTube particularly because that was my first life Before I started uh, officially I have videos that are private on YouTube That I just filmed for me in Varsity And the reason for that as well Is because people who inspire me Were on YouTube first If I, if I had role models There would be a lot of YouTubers on that list mm -hmm. So I watched it And then on the side of like vlogs I was like am I ready to share my life again What's happening on vlogs How are people vlogging today <laughs> And then again with my clients I was pushing for longer form content and while I was pushing that, I was like, why? Because I love it. And mm. it's doing really well. And people get to fully express and explain themselves on longer form content. They get to know who you really are and love you. You know, people come for your content, but they fall in love with your personality. So mm, that's, that's why I started. And it just makes sense for me in my private time to still do what I love on and off camera. Oh, absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. And I love the fact that um, you, you took some time to actually, first of all, pour your own cup and to, and you also, you, 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 you are also self-aware. And that is something that many people actually struggle with on social media. Um, we always hear about just the other day, I heard that, um, some TikTokers actually took a step back from TikTok because they were actually burning out 
you know, always having to push out content mm. all the time, always having to keep everybody else entertained, mm. everyone else happy, everyone else laughing. Mm. Um, you, you, you sometimes kind of forget about yourself. Yeah. So mm. we do actually really appreciate the fact that you, you were actually able to take that step back and do it in a way that didn't first of all you went click bt about yeah. it <laughs> i hoped it wasn't taken that way you never know with the internet no, no. i think as someone who like follows your channel when i first watched i was like yo okay mm. this is and it was i think i took it and it was like okay this is part of the journey like mm. you know yes like over the years it feels like i've gotten to know you and gone to create a Kind of connection with you But then you also understand You're like No I, I get it Like life Life be lifing mm. And this is why You take the break And then when you Came back It was like Oh She back <laughs> Oh she back What are your real thoughts What did you think Too and then, and then And then I was like I sent it to my friend I was like Girl <laughs> Hey <laughs> And then I watched it Because I was like First I was shocked And I was like Okay It makes sense mm, And yes. and I also feel like it, When I watch your return video mm. It was like sometimes we we put like this this big label on like I'm never gonna do this I'm never going to do that I'm mm. done and you realize no you are gonna fall in love again uh, you yes. just need to heal like give yourself Absolutely. you know oh yes like I I need a break mm. and it might have not seemed like it at the time like genuinely at the time you're like I'm done like mm. I could never come back to YouTube and you realize oh, no. That's my first love mm. And that's yeah. how I That's how I received it I cannot speak mm. on I'm other glad. kids Because people ain't trees y'all No Yes mm. You are able to actually Change your mind You are able to and learn And that's what I absorb. loved um, yeah. About that Because I was just like Okay here's a content creator Who is telling us that Things are changing And that's how mm. life is Like you don't need to be A content creator forever And we don't need to know you as a YouTuber forever mm. Like mm. you can come back And rebrand And be like Hey guys Now I'm going for Miss South Africa And that's okay oh, Like yeah. I think That's what I loved I was like Oh So it is okay That yeah. I I only still have Three subscribers mm. Okay And I you can, can even, walk away You Four. can even diversify <laughs> Yeah You can even diversify mm. Your content mm. Because yeah. You're always growing up mm. You know We are all growing up mm. yes. And what our interests What things that Actually pique our interest mm. Are always changing so today it's Pokemon. Tomorrow it's mm -hmm. the young and the rest. There's My son will tell you. Mm, the yeah. next day is the passions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next day it's Benalandas. <laughs> it's yes. always changing all the time. So you can't just keep doing this one you know type funny. of content. It's like we allow kids to change their yeah. mind, but mm. we don't give that same grace to adults. Absolutely. You know, mm. it's like yells, why are you changing mm. now and giving us yes. vlogs? You're not a vlogger. And it's like, no, but. We naturally just are constantly evolving. What's that saying? The only constant thing is change. change. Yes. Um, and I think that's the one thing I love about your channel. But also talking just like off air about like you not only just creating content for yourself, mm. you know, you, you've also grown and gotten to a point where you can now be like, yeah, I can create content for other people mm. and I'm going to charge you. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, how's that bag looking? <laughs> Ooh, it's a multi multifaceted uh, bag. I okay. I believe in multiple streams of income. I've yes, believed yes. in that since uh, a very young age. Mm -hmm. I worked at the age from the age of seventeen okay. because of circumstances, but also because I wanted to be learned. The only way we can learn is to get out there. You know, mm -hmm. our location is one big limitation. But if we break out of it, you know, so. <laughs> Fast forward to 2018, I secured my first uh, hair brand that asked for a consultation. Mm. And then they asked for a rate. I was like, hmm. Kidding. At rate the time, cut. yeah, at the time I had like five uh, multiple streams of income, including paid uh, appearances, you know, to attend an event. I didn't know that was a thing too before content creation um, and all these other things. But mm. I also didn't know that the value that I'm bringing on my little YouTube channel Brands want to know, especially brands that were transitioning from previously serving Caucasian hair mm. to now wanting to, for example, Pantene with a, a white person on their brand, you know, for white hair. And it makes sense, straight hair, but now they're adding organic ingredients and they're like, well, but it can work for Afro hair. And if it's more natural, oh, well, it can work. But how do we tap into this? Mm. They needed my acumen, my knowledge yes. and my two cents. So I would present to brands and it would be once off deals. 2019, I started uh, doing a little bit more than that. Mm. 2021, I then decided, okay, consultations, let's take this seriously. And oh, I started yeah. growing 
younger brands, giving back to the YouTube community. Again, my anchor, <laughs> YouTube and my love. I started consulting for like one-on-ones with creators and one of my creator, uh, I call her a mentee. Blew up so quickly. Give me an answer we can find. Um, DIY, remedial DIY. Ndibuwo is her name. And she's been on Espresso three times, I believe now. Oh, wow. Um, she was on ENCA four weeks ago. And she is now basically almost, I'd say, dominating the, the DIY and deco space, um, mm-hmm. in South Africa. Her channel doesn't say the numbers, but her bag, ooh, we've negotiated some good deals with her and that's where it counts for me. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't know her content pillars. She didn't know where to begin. She didn't want Instagram. And on the 10th of January, she sent me a text saying, I finally did it. I think she's on 35,000 followers now. And we've secured a lot of brand deals for her off the back of November last year, me saying, let me actually consult and grow YouTubers and actually grow their Girl, bag. How much are you charging? I think I might just need you in my life. <laughs> I what? need commitment. It's a four month program. Well, I'm sure. bringing it down to three months next year because of time. And we spend an hour really building who you are, your persona. And she has not shown her family. She has not shown her life. She's not shown half of the things that I have, mm. but she's achieved so much. Her yes. channel turned a year in April this year. And within four months, like I said, we've been able to grow. So with that, I was like, ah, oh, if we could do this for one person, what about companies? And that's me. It's like always, what can we do better? <laughs> How can we grow from this? You know, because I've already spoken to companies before, I thought, well, I need to bring this to corporates. I know I can grow. You need to know what you're bringing in order for you to put that rand or mm, dollar sign the value to it. Of, um, your content, which goes back to something you said earlier. And also, um, we had Zamasa on here and he was like, you need to create content of value. Absolutely. Like the biggest walk away is what did, what did that person leave with? Mm. You know, um, his videos are very informative. So every time I watch his videos, I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. I learned something new today. And I think that's also what you also are relaying is that it's all good and well to wake up and shoot a video, but if there's no value to it, I get. Yes, Maybe absolutely. we need to switch it up mm, So I switched it up <laughs> I had an old friend of mine Who had moved back to South Africa a few years ago From Canada He was actually an old colleague and became a, a close friend uh, Just before I got married mm. And then a family friend now <laughs> And he has an immigration company, a Canadian immigration company. And I thought, well, this is another niche I have no idea about. Mm. Teach me about Canadian immigration. You know, biggest thing is study. Obviously, a lot of people want to study overseas because Mm. of obviously the high quality education. Mm -hmm. But there's so many options in studying in Canada. So many like low fees to high fees. And then obviously understanding the business of Canadian immigration. So that's how I secured. I pitched to him like a client. Like I would And he said well Manage my digital presence Grow our digital presence You know And that was the, the, the One of the biggest clients That I got And again It's long term It's always about sustainability mm. I said friend I can't do this for you For a month <laughs> How are we doing this long term And he actually said to me how much do you want? <laughs> so I had to pitch those deliverables just like, again, you got to perform. So on, on his side, that's really how I'm helping Beaver Immigration grow. And the, I've now, I'm now an immigration expert. Ask me anything <laughs> and I'll know. But again, it goes back to that value and knowing who you are, regardless of the industry that you're in. We are, we find ourselves so limited in the way school teaches us to just yes. grow and get into a career. Yeah. But multiple streams of income can come from that one skill that you have. Mm. Just that one skill. And money speaking. If I can speak, I can make money. That's mm. my motto. 100%. Mm. Yeah, nah, I was shook. never ready for that one. That one, <laughs> no, it shook me in a good way because I, I like the fact that you're not just a content creator, you know, and I think sometimes... There is that misconception of like we box people in. It's like, yeah, create vlogs, create this, create, but that's mm. all you do. And that's what you're good for. And you can talk to a brand and say, I'll create this for my channel. And I like how you pivoting and changing to say, I'll create content for myself, but I can mm. also white label it and help you create content for your channel and make it grow. Mm. Um, and, and I think that is... For me personally, that's like actually the definition of being a creative. It's like mm. you just cre- constantly creating mm. and it, it doesn't always need to be about you, your yeah. life. Mm. Um, 
you know, your lived experiences mm. as you know the the catch terms are. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can do that for like brands yes. and charge yes. and make money mm. and and be a full time content creator without necessarily being the YouTuber. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shall. Um my my next question for you is um who are some of the content creators you follow then? Since you're in the business of actually creating or mm. helping um rise um like amazing content creators. Yo. Please. Okay, so off the back of what we just spoke about, Canadian immigration, I needed to find somebody in Canada who actually creates Canadian immigration content So I found Busi, who's a South African Who's moved to Canada And besides giving her business from my client I needed to learn about Canadian immigration So she's one of the TikTokers I watch She's got great TikTok content Found her on YouTube as well Found her on um, Instagram And then internationally, UK, lifestyle I think I'm a Patricia Bright I think I am, I don't know But our energy is, you know You know when you feel someone I see it, I see it Yeah, we both come from a finance background I studied finance and investments She studied finance and accounting I started off with accounting So I see myself Whoever I see myself through In a sense I feel like Oh we can connect Okay what is she doing now Oh what's happening In like the first world countries So to call it And she's somebody Who just speaks to my heart And then in South Africa Hmm, that's a hard one because a lot of South Africans are listening, but Mzoa and Caesar love, love their them. content because yes. they're couples as well. Um, she was Homuto Ramano. I'm so obsessed mm-hmm. with her content now. Home content, Tandi Gama as well. Her sister, Christine Gama. And yeah, you know, some OGs, tough. hey? Like people, people like, yeah, people I also know personally who are who they are on and offline. I'm really big on that because my brand is so tied to who I am. I never mm-hmm. want to deviate. If I was doing comedy, Mm. It would be very different mm. because I just have to show up and be that character. Yes. But it's actually even harder, you know, like I was mourning my, my father's death while I was on YouTube. It's, it felt like the y'alls here and the y'alls when she turns off the camera is two different people. And mm. I, I struggled with that a lot. So now I go back to creators who are themselves on and offline so that I can draw inspiration from that and also know that there's no plug. Because my brand has no no prank. It's actually got my name on it. <laughs> you know, y'all's channel. So it's quite hard to, to separate. So I always go back to, to creators who really are more like me. <laughs> oh, I, I love that. I love that. I think that's yeah. the most uh, said saying on this podcast. I love that. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we love the fact that you're all about mental health and your wellness as well. But how do you prevent yourself... Um, on a day to day basis, since you're also back on YouTube, how do you prevent yourself from actually burning out? Talking. Mm. Uh, thankfully it's, it's something I'm very strong at doing. Yeah. And also I, I've, I've stripped myself of the titles that the world has given me and the titles that I've given myself. Yeah. So yes, I'm a social media digital specialist, what, what, but I'm a granddaughter and a daughter. That's always where I go back to. That yeah. is where I feel the least judged. Wash the dishes. You angry, you upset, you 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 hungry, you There's are laughing. No place Wash the dishes. That will humble mm. you. Yes. Like home. home. Cause they're like I don't care, you have a million You're not yours at home. <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> <Guess it's each>. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so I always feel that, that that's the best place I can find myself. And also I love that my husband always uh humbles me in a sense. There are things that deals that I wanted to take and he was just like are you sure though? But that's not, that's not you. It can be yours. I can see how people can see, but it's not really you. And there's been a contract I've signed before. I've received product and I had to take it back <laughs> because it wasn't me. And I like, know, yeah, yeah, for two years I cut ties with that brand because how can you sign a contract, create content after the first submission? You say no. I had to straighten my natural hair for all the content that I needed to do and at the time, I was very much like, I straighten my hair once a month. Oh, so you won't do that the whole week now to create content for this brand, you know? Mm. So it's it's one of those things where my husband was just like, let's bring it back to you. <laughs> Not y'all's channel, you. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. My final question would be, what has 2022 taught you? Ooh, that is so deep. Oh, man. It's to always check in on myself. I'm one of those people who, I'm um, the strong friend. No, 
check in on me. Yes, I expect people to check in on me too. But check in on me constantly just because, you know, in my intro to my comeback um, on on YouTube, I said I looked down that ninth floor and the fact that I've, I've even considered, I don't want to use the word considered suicide, but the fact that it actually crossed my mind. I went up to that ninth floor is crazy to me, mm. but not crazy enough for me to not want to change it. You know, so checking in constantly. Because if I did on that day, if I checked in on how yours is really doing, my cry for help would have been to me first. Mm. Shut, or should I say, cut the cameras. Mm. <laughs> you know, let me do me at that point. So that's the biggest lesson because I would never want my son to even think that mom would ever leave him for that reason, in a sense, mm. you know, without condemning that. But yeah, checking in on myself has been the biggest lesson. And I do that every single day. If it means waking up early to just do that, have a slow morning, I will check in on myself. If I need to wake up at 5 a.m. just to check up on yours, I will do that. Mm. Oh. Right. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. And then my final question is, um, what advice would you like to give to all those people who are watching your content and they're inspired. They want to get into it. Um, never mind the equipment. Never mind the actual admin of getting started. But what mental state of mind would you actually um, advise them to, to be in? Should they, should they just put themselves under pressure, you know, write a whole script for six videos <laughs> and just churn it all out one by one? Or should they just take their time and just um, check in with themselves, as you just said just now, which is advice that I really am loving and I'm going to be using myself going <laughs> forward. <laughs> but what advice would you like to give to those people who are inspired by you and just want to get started doing what you do as well? Jeez, I, my, my husband doesn't like that I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Bala pants, write it down. Mm. I think we forget the fact that um, we forget, <laughs> number yes. one. Secondly, um, there's power in taking something out of your mind and writing it down. Everything, I'd say, I can easily say everything that I've achieved in my life to this day, including brand deals, I've written most of it down. And mm. that is crazy to me, you know, that I, I said to my, my husband the other day that I, I said, I want to, I want to stop buying pads. I did a, a sanitary towel brand not reach out yesterday to me, you know, but it's one of those things where you write down the other day, I wrote Porsche M work with them. Five days later, I was shooting at uh, a Porsche M event. So write it down. Mm. You know, it can either make you move, let those letters be life, mm. or you can scratch it out and say, let's move on to something else. Let's build on to this idea. And we don't want to do that. The mm. reason we don't want to write down is because it holds you accountable. If you're not accountable to yourself, who will be? Well, who, who must you be accountable to? Mm. You know, so I call myself out. <laughs> I look at that. Whatever I've written down, I look at it. And most of the time, I, I would say confidently, I'm able to achieve it simply because that is my accountability partner. We all's on paper. Oh, I love that. Wow, thank you so much for dragging me. <laughs> thank you so much. This show is just a, just like a, a, a nice package to drag some PUA. That's like, all it is. All day, every day. She's just like, you gotta be accountable to yourself. I'm like, why? Such violence, girl. <laughs> no, that, uh, I, I feel it in my core, in my being, but thank you. So much for sharing such wisdom um, You are incredible Thank you I, I love the journey that you're currently on uh, I love to to see where you're going to go um, In the coming years Oh, mm-hmm. thank um, you so much You're doing great You're doing amazing uh, You plugged me on to like two people That I need to go and watch now Because <laughs> yes. I, I do consume a lot of content mm. And so the fact that I don't know them I'm like <laughs> but now there's there's uh there's a new uh subscriber in the building. Yes. And uh yeah guys, I'm definitely going to start holding myself accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, so am I. Yeah, like just uh, subscribe to my channel some here's I'm going to get them and um <laughs> uh, make sure to rate the third draft podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, but from me and and from me, Mash. And make sure you follow all of us, y'all. Make yeah, sure you follow us. Yeah, and Zim Teta, you know, TikTok, Instagram. As in, let me plug myself. <laughs> clearly, I haven't been doing a good job. All right. Follow me at Zim Teta, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. You know, YouTube channel. Um, I'll, I'll drop something, guys. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and follow me as well. I'm Mashi, Mash underscore IIE on all social media platforms. Um, YouTube is something that I've been considering for quite some time. And let's see, maybe I'll also come to you, the YouTubes, one of yes. these days. Welcome you know? back to my channel. Mm, once yes. I buy that Canon 600D. Hey, yeah. Tommy. No, you first need to write down the vision, the goal, the why. I have the to why. write it down first. You balapans. Mm. Balapans. Mm. You're so balapansy. I'm gonna no, be. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that, that, that was a bit off. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I'll see myself out. Um, thank you so much for listening to the third draft podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.